Hello guys, now I'm in that infamous Mazda CX-5 with the 2.2 Skyactiv diesel which was brought to me on a tow truck because it had a low oil pressure warning sorry for the sound, let me try to... yeah, a bit better so it had a low oil pressure warning and although the oil strainer and oil pump was replaced so as I, as I initially said to the owner let's check underneath the valve cover let's see what we find out there was like a carbon buildup underneath the valve cover so i got rid of it i cleaned it uh, done the oil change engine flush still low oil pressure and it is smoking uh, blueish upon acceleration um I also made a video about it where I asked for your help and I got really really nice comments and good suggestions most of you like said that to check the the journals on the bearings uh, on the on the uh, cam uh, what's that connecting rods which requires obviously oil pan removal and I can do that but like you need to understand the car is not mine and the customer already spent I think five six hundred on it pounds just to get that thing done or maybe more i'm not sure and uh, i done the job so he needs to pay for that as well and i don't want to extract money from him if it is not economical to repair and i i yesterday uh one guy messaged me on the on my youtube channel and then we started to chat on, on my facebook page and he he he's ba he based in he is based in new zealand and he's got really good insights he and they do a lot of these engines and we came to the same conclusion like we we exchanged a bit of a knowledge with each other and he does the same job as i do here in the uk and he suggested the same uh that the oil pan has to come off and check uh how the job was done because even though if you if you get if that gets changed and the top end is not cleaned the sludge the build up the carbon chunks they still can get down and can block even the new strainer so i'll need to get the owner to contact the owner obviously again and uh, discuss it with him but probably the last thing i will do like labor wise i'll, I'll check that and see if that solves the issue for him but i got it emoted so it passed the mot so this is the first time i'm going to take it for a test drive i report back after a test drive i'm just going like very close because if that message the oil oil warning light oil pressure warning light comes up i don't want to drive it uh, like too long or be too far from home so yeah, i'll take it for a test drive and also the guy from New Zealand maybe said that it's not even consuming oil it may be um, the the fuel injectors are bad in which I think very likely the case like they are bad because they are out of spec so I'll take it for a test drive get it up to temperature and see if that message comes up when, when I'm driving it or not that's one thing and then I'll do a compression test just to understand the basic health of the engine in what condition it is so yeah I'll do that and I'll report back to you guys so I am back from a test drive and as you can see I've done 22 miles and the vehicle system malfunction light came on alongside with the exclamation mark in the yellow triangle uh, the MPG is very good um, but yeah, I'm checking now with the diagnostic tool to check for the codes and Here are the codes I'm getting. It's PO6DE um, Engine oil pressure control circuit stuck on uh, Let me check now the live data. What are the values for the oil pressure? Okay, now I have selected the PIDs. I want to see I've got 750 rpm engine oil temperature at 87 degrees and the oil pressure at idle it is very good and also you can see the duty cycle the, the for the oil control valve it is not working so it is not um, turn on or off I'm not sure if zero is off or zero is on but I will check that later so basically um, at idle and having 190 kPa which is very very good and I'm going to rev the car up in 1500 and see how the oil pressure changes so I'm at one and a half thousand 220 kPa it is good now I'm going to 2000 227 it is good 
and much. Let, let me try three and a half. Yeah, it is not going where I want it to be. So it's not going around at least 360 kPa. I'm going now, I'm going to turn off the car now, the engine now, and wait when it, it drops below 80 degrees of Celsius. And when it, once it does, I want to see if the this one, the control circuit uh, valve, will turn on or not, if it will control anything, and I'll report back to you guys. Okay, I waited till the oil temperature dropped below 80 degrees of Celsius, and now, as you can see, the oil pressure control valve is working again. So at that time when it is over 80 degrees, I guess it turns off so that the oil, uh, the engine can, ha can have sufficient oil pressure. And as you can see, it is having now 150, so it is quite low. And if I try to rev it till one and a half thousand thousand RPM, I'll check how much it will have. So let's do that. 150 and it should have between 140 and 190 so it is on the lower side and let's check on at 2000 rpm yeah still 150 nearly 160 so it is it's still low and let's check 3000 rpm it is low it is still low it doesn't get where i want it to be but let me check one more time yeah it doesn't get up to 300 or over 300 and it should be if it is good like if if it's properly working it should be around at least 390 is ideal now I'm getting again over 80. I want to see if that engine oil pressure control valve will turn off or not. So let me wait a little bit more till the engine oil temperature rises and I want to see if that will turn off or not. Okay, I got the engine oil temperature up to 88 degrees of Celsius and as you can see the oil pressure control valve is still regulating the pressure. So uh, and before when I was coming back or when I came back from the test drive it was I think 87 degrees of Celsius the pressure was higher very good around 180 190 and this one was off so it got me thinking now let me switch the camera so I think there are two sorry three scenarios what can happen either the oil pressure control valve is bad or I don't know when it is triggered because I was driving that time and I don't know if it is triggered by the engine oil temperature or by something else when I drive the car or RPMs so that it turns off and let the oil pressure uh, rise to higher pressure so that it saves the engine or if it's just not working properly so that is one thing another thing is the oil pressure switch still which can be faulty and not showing the correct uh, readings so I need to test that one and I'll still need I'll, I'll switch the camera back back again and check the default codes in the ECM and check the freeze frame data so I want to see when that was triggered at what temperatures if I can or if I will be able to see it so at what temperature and if the oil control valve was working or not but basically I, if I'm correct and not wrong this engine has two oil control valves one is up top in the cylinder head and one is down um, on the back of the engine if you are standing in front of the car from the from the bonnet side from or from the front bonnet side and this one which I can see in the live data is the one I think the bottom so in back of the engine and it is quite expensive so I'll need to contact the owner and I still need to get the compression test done, which I'll be do, which I will do soon. But my guess is now, or three scenarios can happen: change the oil pressure switch. I think that's cheaper, and check the readings, and or check um, mechanically the engine oil pressure, and then check the oil control valve. No, before remove the oil pan and check the condition of the oil strainer, and then maybe check the 
oil control valve which is more expensive so yep yeah, these are the three things coming to my mind right now uh, but let me switch the camera and check the fault code uh, the freeze frame of the fault code okay i'm in the freeze frame data of the fault when it was logged so you can see the engine load but it is not the oil control valve duty cycle if i'm correct so the coolant temperature was 86 degrees at 2.2 thousand rpm i was driving 106 kilometers per hour so it is around 65 mph and let's check what else i can see from here Yeah, the engine oil temperature was 87 degrees so that's that was the same when i came back home i don't know if i can if i will be able to see the the duty cycle of the oil control valve this is weird like it's minus 40 for the air cooler temperature sensor mm. I don't know if it's right or wrong. I'll, I'll do my research. I'm not sure. Yeah, but there is no duty cycle. So it is a tough situation. As I said, I'll do three things or four things. So basically compression test. That's the very next one. Then I'll, I'll still think I need to get a gauge just to take, test the oil pressure switch mechanically. So if the values are the same when when I scanning it with the scan tool or if it will show different results that's the second the third will be removing the oil pan and check the condition uh, of the bottom end and the oil strainer and the fourth will be changing the oil control valve itself and then I will report back to you if it solved the issue or not but next or but now let me get the compression test done so here is how to test the compression on the Mazda 2.2 Skyactiv diesel so what I've done so far I removed the engine beauty cover that's easy just pull it off remove it and then I undone a few bolts and nuts two nuts here one here one here you can see the studs still so I removed that so I can have this cable free disconnected bunch of connectors removed this metal bracket held by two eight millimeter bolts removed that and undone further two eight millimeter bolts down there because i needed to pull that uh, squishy sponge which is here and let me show you uh, some, one more thing as well so i needed to remove this one um the bracket the nut bolts and i have the glow plug connector here so un unclip the connector here removed it from the bracket and how i removed the connectors the tops from the glow plugs is basically with a long needle nose plier i pulled on them but be careful because you don't want to break it so don't pull on this tab directly but rather try to pull it from somewhere in the middle so basically try to do it like not from up top but a bit from with an angle so grab it here and then pull it towards you or upwards straight up and then let me go back so for the glow plugs you will need a 10 millimeter socket a long one and gently remove the glow plug be very careful you don't really want to break it so you place the socket over let me use the long bar so basically i got the extension bar and the long socket so put it over but only that you can still see the threads on the glow plugs and then you try to undo them or undo the glow plug and see if it is moved because if it is moving because you don't want to break it off and also when you're going I'll, sh I'll show you the compression test compression tester kit as well but when you're doing the compression test don't forget to pull off those um, 
cables or connectors from the injectors so the car won't fire up and you won't have excessive fuel in the combustion chamber but yeah now let me remove the glow plugs i'm going to do i mean i'll disconnect all the connectors while we'll just remove one glow plug at a time check the compressor compression and put it back and then carry on with the rest i'll show you the results and i'll show you what the results should be so here is the first glow plug removed also good tip very be, be be very careful with it don't hit the tip to anything because i think it is ceramic or you can broke the ceramic inside and then it will be not working so place it somewhere safe safe like on a soft um, cloth and here is the compression tester kit for diesel cars here is the gauge and i think i will be using this adapter or the other one. i'm not sure it doesn't really matter go with the one it fits or it's the same thickness of like your glow plug and the thread as well so thread it in and then connect the quick air coupling or quick air connector to the other end and do the compression test i'll i'll show you how to do that as well i have screwed in the adapter now i'm going to connect the gauge simple as that so gauge connected and basically how it all happens so what you need to do you can do it on your own or you can ask someone so basically someone should be sitting in a car and cranking it over so press the uh, to start try to start the car and the other one will let him know when it the needle is not moving anymore further up so that when it reaches the final compression value so then you can stop cranking or if you are on your own just crank it till it stops itself and then check the the readings i repeat the same step with all four uh, cylinders and then let you know the results okay i have done the compression test and as you could see from the results they are pretty much very same and i linked the the mazda manual the original manual what it says like how much it should be it depending the the injector uh, connector type so if you have a two pin it has to be a certain amount or numbers and if you have six pin again certain numbers but in my case except the fourth cylinder uh very very close to the minimum so that 276 it was very close slightly above uh, i think the last cylinder was a, a bit bit less but uh, again and Mazda says like differences between the cylinders should be not more than 21 psi so I give it a benefit of the doubt because it has is like a higher mileage and let me check how much exactly it has 132,000 miles on the clock so it it's a higher mileage one and it met the minimum um, standard or specification uh, so I, I, I think the compression is okay, the, the engine is quite healthy, also I'll need to, st I will still want to do a leak down test, I'll need to get an adapter to fit either to the injector hole or to the glow plug hole, once I'm going to get that uh, I'll do the leak down test just to confirm because in my opinion that is more precise, it will show like what's the, the person, the loss in percentage and I can hear like uh, even air hissing somewhere so I know there is the leak so that is uh, that is more precise but yeah this was it for this video the next tips are going to the next steps I'm going to take is to get a gauge for the oil pressure uh, switch and I want to see the readings on the gauge and then compare it with the readings on the diagnostic tool um, and then as I said I'll remove the oil pan if that will be necessary and then again I'll change the oil control off if that will be necessary so guys thank you very much thank you very much for watching uh, see you soon in the very next video take care and have a nice day